Hey everyone, I'm doing something a little bit different today. I've made a slideshow to use as the background visual for this. I meant to have this video up before the Pro Tour started, but here we are a couple days after the PTs ended. Oops. Well, there was a lot of Tron in the PT, and it turns out the One Ring was pretty strong. Perhaps a little too strong. The rules text on the card states that you can tap it to add a burden counter to it and draw a number of cards equal to the number of burden counters on the ring. This wording has a fatal flaw, however. You can rack up as many burden counters as you want on the ring, and when you decide you don't want to lose any more life, you can simply play another one ring and put the original with all the burden counters on it into your graveyard as a state-based action due to the legend rule. Since the burden counters are placed on the individual ring and not on the player, it resets and you'll stop losing life. The one ring is legendary, but that's not enough. The current legend rule only keeps you from controlling two of the same permanent, not from casting another one. The legend rule, introduced in the aptly named Legends expansion in 1994, has changed a lot since its inception. It originally stated that you could only have one copy of any legend in your deck. Basically, every legend was restricted until Ice Age came out in 1995. This was spot on flavor wise, but it caused decks to be inconsistent. The main part of this version of the legend rule was that if your opponent controlled a legend, you couldn't cast yours. All your legends went dead in your hand. This came to a head with the Rebels deck during Mask's block. They were centered around Lin Sivi, Defiant Hero, who could tutor out other Rebel cards into play. In the mirror match, whoever resolved their Lin Sevi first, usually the player who went on the play, would pretty much win the game on the spot since the other player couldn't combo off. The legend rule changed again in Kamigawa block. From Champions of Kamigawa in 2004 to Magic 2014 in 2014, if your opponent controlled a legend and you had a copy of the same one in your hand, you could now cast your copy. However, both legends would be put into their owner's graveyards. Wizards finally settled on the current and very simple version of the rule. You may have up to four copies of a legendary card in your deck, just like any other card, but you may only control one copy of any legendary at a time. If you play a second copy while you control one, you will immediately have to put one into your graveyard as a state-based action. With this version of the rule, you can rack up tons of burden counters on your one ring before playing another one ring, completely mitigating the one ring's only downside. Again, being able to chain rings together mitigates the one ring's only downside of making you lose life, on top of being a flavor fail, of course. This wouldn't be a problem if the burden counters were put onto the player instead of the one ring. This would allow you to keep three or four copies of the one ring in your deck, but still have its one downside. Now, with Shieldred the Apocalypse popular enough in modern, at least in mono black coffers decks, the one ring effectively has no downside at times, because you'll gain back all the life you lose. If you draw four cards off the one ring while you have Shieldred in play, you'll gain eight life, and then lose four life next turn, netting the same life total. Or you can play another one ring, legend away the first one, after gaining eight life, and you won't even lose any life turning the ring's downside into an upside with Shieldred. Remember, the One Ring is four generic mana, so any deck can play it. It's a similar issue to when every deck in Pioneer was running Smuggler's Copter, and they had to ban the thing because it let every deck have access to a 3-3 flyer for two mana that let them loot a card every turn, breaking the color pie and making the Pioneer format homogenous. The One Ring is better than Reckoner Bankbuster, which was just banned in standard for the same or very similar reasons as Smuggler's Copter. It was too ubiquitous in the format, pretty much breaking the color pie and making decks homogenous. Mill decks are running four of the One Ring because the card is so strong and it's no trouble to splash for the card because, wait for it, it's colorless. The One Ring would be an acceptable card if it weren't colorless. There are four Saurons in the Lord of the Rings set, which I won't complain about right now. Two of the four Saurons are Grixis, that is blue, black, and red and one is Rakdos, or Red and Black. The last Sarn is Mono Black. Perhaps I'm arguing for flavor over function here, but since Sarn created the ring, shouldn't it be in his colors? The one ring could at least be Mono Black, which would still allow Coffers decks to run four copies of it. I don't think Coffers having a strong engine piece like the one ring is a bad thing, because it's really not that strong of a deck. Not every deck should be running the same engine piece. The one ring could be Rakdos, which would force Coffers to splash with some Chromatic Stars or Chromatic Spheres like Greentron does. The more colors of mana the one ring costs, the weaker it is. It being Grixis is a little excessive, but it could at least be Mono black. The One Ring also doesn't even interact with the Ring Tempts You mechanic, which has bothered me since this I was previewed. Maybe this is a good thing, because a lot of people, including myself, didn't want another initiative or dungeon mechanic in the two-player constructed formats, but call me Spice State Rack because this is a flavor fail and it bothers me. I actually think the Ring Tempts You mechanic might be better than initiative in dungeons in two-player formats, but we'll talk about that another time. I definitely don't think the One Ring is as much of an issue as the companions were. The One Ring is more comparable to the Phyrexian free spells, like Mental Misstep. The Ring isn't free to cast, but it has no colored mana in the cost, and so it's somewhat possible for the Ring to start showing up as four of in every deck. Like, imagine if Burn started running four copies of the One Ring. Obviously, they can't errata the mana cost of the card to be Mono Black or Rakdos or Grixis or whatever. Wizards could, theoretically, open up to restricting cards in Modern, which would be very interesting. 
and even set a precedent for wizards to restrict cards in all the formats, not just vintage. Limiting and semi-limiting, as opposed to banning, is something that Yu-Gi-Oh has been doing for ages, and I believe it to be a much more elegant solution than completely banning a card outright. Limiting and semi-limiting is something that Yu-Gi-Oh has been doing for ages, and I believe it to be a much more elegant solution than completely banning a card outright. A lot of cards are straight up banned in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, you can't play Pot of Greed at all, which is basically their equivalent of Ancestral Recall. But many other cards that are pretty strong, but not strong enough to be banned, are semi-limited to two copies, such as Pot of Desires, or limited to just one copy, like Upstart. The maximum number of cards with the same name that you can run in Yu-Gi-Oh! is three instead of four, like in Magic. So, of course, Magic would limit things to three, two, or one. Now, at the end of the day, it is just a game piece but it's an expensive game piece, and that's what I'm concerned about most. If every deck has to run four copies of this thing, and it doesn't get banned, and it's here to stay in modern, then I'd at least like it to go down in price. One of my LGSs does modern and allows a few proxies since they're not a WPN premium location, and I just drew a little proxy one ring because I'm playing Tron, and I don't want to shell any more money for a piece of cardboard. I just want magic to be fun, diverse, and accessible. That's all my thoughts for now. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the one ring and even the ring tempting you mechanic. I was working on an essay on whether Orcish Bow Masters was gonna power creep Murktide out of Modern, but after seeing the proto results, it looks like it already has. I'll still work on that essay. Let me know if you're still interested in hearing that essay, even though it might be irrelevant by this point. Please let me know if you're interested in more speculative and opinion pieces like this and like that essay, and I'll see you next time.